Juan Garza surrounded himself with friends and family. He used them to do his dirty work, smuggling his drugs and murdering his enemies one after another. But Garza's about to kill the wrong person, a member of his own family. And he's going to learn that the old saying, blood is thicker than water, doesn't apply when the blood is flowing with drugs and death. By the age of 35, Juan Garza was a virtual king in the world of illegal drugs, and he had managed to corrupt everyone and everything innocent within his reach. I can't believe you guys are making me a grandfather. Bernabe Sosa was Juan Garza's son-in-law. He was married to his daughter, Maribel Sosa. Father and son. And she apparently had warned Bernabe not to get involved with her father. I was wondering, how are you going to support my daughter? Bernabe Sosa did not heed his wife's loving advice. No, I, I have a better idea. I have some businesses and things you can run. I won't turn down a job. Yes. Bienvenido y salud, mijo. Salud. Sosa had no idea that he had just sealed his fate. If an individual wants to have a large, powerful narcotic smuggling organization, the only way they can enforce their, their employees is, is murder. And this is what he did. He's going to pay for this. The He's organization the one that started to have some problems because as all these murders were taking place, Rumble's they started to fear one. each other. When they would go out to kill somebody, they were worried oh. that they were going to get killed. So it's him or you? So who's gonna die? Because him. Juan was becoming real quick to kill somebody that he thought was double-crossing him. Garza's next target was Thomas Rumbo. I don't know what the... What happened to the marijuana? Yeah, it was Pancho's deal. I had nothing to do with it. It's your man, it's your responsibility. Rumbo, a local Sarah, factory worker, was a part-time drug courier for the organization. Okay. I trusted you. What business is business? Juan Garza believed that Thomas Rumbo had stolen 350 pounds of marijuana. And in reality, it had been seized. And uh, Juan was ruthless for uh, taking revenge on people who stole money or drugs. This murder occurred at the time of the Gulf War, and uh, Garza had made a, a strange comment to the other individuals in the car that if President Bush can kill, so can I. Drunk with power and demented by drugs, Garza had become totally unpredictable. Garza was partying, so to speak, with Deanna Flores Villarreal. They were doing coke and drinking. And... Uh, people later told us that he felt that she was always laughing at him. It was kind of a gruesome murder. Juan had tied a bag over her head and strangled her to death. It seemed Juan Garza's psychotic thirst for blood knew no limits. Soon, his own son-in-law, Bernabe Sosa, became the focus of his deranged suspicions. I'll see you tonight, okay? I really don't feel good about this, baby. She knew Bernabe was working for her father. She knew her father was very dangerous. But be careful. And she knew he was involved in drugs. And they had lost several loads of marijuana and that Bernabe was working on those loads. Uh, as a result, Garza began to suspect that Bernabe Sosa was an informant. They brought Sosa over to Mexico, told them they were going to look for a uh, landing strip for some of the planes that were bringing in narcotics, but he never made it back. Uh, they had questioned him about the marijuana. Apparently, he held to his story. He said he didn't know what happened. I don't believe him. Do you believe him? No. 
no, 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 por favor. Garza personally shot him uh, in the head. At the time they killed him, his daughter was six months pregnant with his grandchild. She realized at that point that her father had killed her husband. And uh, when it struck this close to home, when he started killing his family members, we realized that, you know, we had to, we had to wrap things up and, and try to arrest him and, and get him behind bars. After Bernabe Sosa's murder, U.S. Customs obtained federal arrest warrants and executed a series of simultaneous raids on the homes of Juan Garza and his employees. Police officer! More than a dozen suspects were arrested and large quantities of drugs and weapons were seized. And incredibly, Juan Garza had escaped across the border into Mexico. Through our contacts, we learned about Garza and his whereabouts. He fled into Mexico and he continued dealing and smuggling drugs from Mexico. And uh, as a result of that, surveillance was set up on the residents. For six hours, customs agents and Mexican federal police waited and watched. He's in the truck. And finally, the elusive fugitive emerged. taken into custody by Mexican federal police. He was in Mexico illegally because he was a U.S. citizen. After many hours, uh, the Mexican immigration officials deported Garza to the United States and we were waiting for him to, to come back. When he was handed over to us, he seemed a little bit dazed. This prisoner is now under U.S. jurisdiction. And he was kind of confused about how all this happened, about how he got caught. And, and uh, now he's back in the United States, the last place he wanted to be, especially in our custody. So he seemed pretty kind of depressed and confused about what was going on. Juan Garza's sadistic reign of terror had finally come to an end. 